Welcome friends to this uh, new lecture of soil science and technology. In the last lecture, uh, we talked about uh, soil aeration and we discussed about different uh, you know uh, what is soil aeration and what are the different processes of soil aeration. We talked about diffusion, we talked about uh, mass flow of gases and then uh, we talked about different factors which affects um, soil aeration. And uh, we started, uh, you know, uh, discussing about the factors which affect soil addition and uh, I will start from those factors today and I will try to finish this uh, by uh, this lecture and then we will go ahead and start uh, soil temperature which is another important soil physical uh, parameter. So, we are talking about soil uh, factors that affecting soil addition. So, one of the major uh, factor uh, which affects the soil addition is soil profile and you know that oxygen tends to decrease in the soil with depth and uh, vice versa trend can be found in case of carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide can be increased uh, generally increase with the depth in the soil. And also we, we have found that uh, soil heterogeneity is also uh, you know influ you know soil heterogeneity also influences uh, soil aeration because uh, long term tillage reduces the aeration and uh, clay soil has less aeration and uh, interpaid zones have more uh, aeration than within the pits. So, uh, you can see that uh, you know clearly in this uh, uh, in this uh, in this graph that if we plot the percentage of carbon dioxide in uh, in x axis and in the y axis if we put the soil depth in uh, meter you will see that uh, uh, soil depth in, uh, in centimeter you will see that with the increase of uh, uh, with the increase in depth from 0 to uh, you know the depth is increasing from this 0 to 800 centimeter and uh, as a result of that increase in the soil depth the percentage of carbon dioxide in the soil air is increasing uh, and also uh, this increase in uh, carbon dioxide in soil air is higher in case of wet season than that of dry season. Then also you know uh, well, as you can see from this uh, picture that these are uh, clays, uh, you know these are soil which are showing the swelling and shrinkage properties as we have discussed in case of varty soil. And in this inter interpaid zones, these shows more aeration than within the pits. So, uh, these uh, you know soil heterogeneity is also having an important uh, function for controlling soil erosion, uh, soil aeration. So, let us go to the next slide and see what are the important other important aspects. Well, seasonal difference is one of the major uh, uh, you know major factor for uh, soil aeration as you can see that obviously, we will get poor aeration in wet season. In this uh, graph you will see that as the uh, you know as the monsoon is uh, you know, uh, in case of in case of monsoon season, obviously, uh, which is denoted by this red solid line by June 20, and then August 01 and September 01 and November 15, obviously the carbon dioxide increase in the soil profile increases in the wetter season than that of a dry season. So poor aeration you will get in the wetter season because of uh, you know all the pore spaces are filled with water in the wet season. So, they are you know ultimately creating very uh, you know small uh, chances of uh, proper aeration. And effects of vegetation, well vegetation also transpires lowers the ground water table and as a result of that uh, due to the lowering of the ground water table it improves the aeration status of the soil. So, uh, let us go to the next slide and see what are the other 
ecological effects of soil erosion well effects on organic residue degradation is one of the major ecological effects on soil erosion because more oxygen uh, you know helps in more decay of organic matter however entire soil property depends on soil erosion now oxidation reduction of elements are also important as you can see in this table uh, these are different elements starting from carbon nitrogen sulfur and then iron and manganese and you can see a normal from in uh, their normal form in well oxidized soils and they are reduced from found in waterlogged soils. So, obviously, uh, in the normal form, normal forms of carbon in well oxidized soil is basically carbon dioxide, in case of nitrogen that is nitrate, in case of sulfur there is sulfate, in iron it is Fe3 plus or ferric, in case of manganese it is Mn4 plus or manganic. Whereas, in the reduced conditions, these forms will be change into reduced form like methane and ethylene in case of carbon. In case of nitrogen, it will reduce to ammonium or elemental nitrogen. In case of sulfur, it will reduce to either hydrogen sulfide or elemental sulfide. And then uh, Fe3 plus will reduce to Fe2 plus or ferrous and in case of Mn4 plus, it will reduce to Mn2 plus. Sometime carbon will reduce to ethyl alcohol also. So, you can see these are different forms which are present as a result of aeration status in the soil. Obviously, these oxidized form will be present when there will be more oxygen in the soil, whereas in the reduced condition when there will be less oxygen and more carbon dioxide, specific, specifically in the waterlogged condition, there will be more carbon dioxide. So, as a result of that, there will be reduced form which are present in these uh, reduced conditions. So, uh, what are the other important factors? You know, remember that oxidized zones have red color, while reduced zones have gray, blue color, uh, and uh, these are characteristic features of uh, you know uh, of uh, water saturated clay conditions. And remember that anaerobic condition causes emission of greenhouse gases like methane and nitrous oxides. And effects on activities of higher plants. Remember that poor aeration affects shoot growth more than the root growth, but different plants have different degree of tolerance to water logging because uh, as you can see in the rice field, rice can you know withstand a you know water logging condition whereas most of the uh, most of the field crops cannot withstand water logging condition and also low aeration affects the nutrient uptake by the plants. So, uh, these are effects of uh, ecological effects on soil aeration which uh, Im, you know shows a clear impact on uh, uh, you know in the activities and uh, for the growth of different higher plants. So, let us go to the next slide and see uh, okay, so one of the more major important uh, law which governs the diffusion of gases in soil is Fick's law. So we have to learn the Fick's law, and uh, in the in the next lecture of this week, we'll be talking about different uh, you know problems uh, solving uh, different different uh, different problems, and we'll be solving those problems using Fick's law of diffusion. So, let us discuss about the Fick's law of diffusion. Well, you know the diffusion process in the soil can be described by Fick's law and it generally uh, the form of Fick's law is Qd equal to uh, this minus d into dc over dx. So, where Qd is basically diffusive flux which is mass diffusing across a unit area per unit, uh, unit time. In case of d, it is a diffusion coefficient that is area per time. C is the concentration which is mass of diffusing substance per volume, x is the distance and dc over dx is the concentration gradient. And if partial pressure P is used instead of concentration of the diffusing component, we get this formula that is Qd equal to minus d over beta uh, um, uh, into dp by dx. So, beta is basically the ratio of the partial pressure to the concentration. So, we have already discussed what is partial pressure in the last lecture. So, I am not going to further you know I am not you know I am not going to discuss it in details. So, uh, this is the general form of Fick's law and let us see what are the further modification of Fick's law. So, uh, you know that considering first diffusive part of the gear phase, I mean uh, 
uh, if you consider the if you consider first the diffusive path in the air phase the diffusion coefficient which you, in the fixed law that is ds must be it must be uh, smaller than that of the bulk air d0 owing to the limited fraction of the total volume occupied by the continuous air field pores and also the tortuous nature of the pores so what this means so basically you can see that according to the fixed law that if we, you know the diffusion coefficient ds must be smaller than that of the diffusion coefficient of d0 that is the diffusion uh, coefficient in the air uh, in the bulk air so why is that because in the soil the diffusion is getting uh, you know diffusion is not very simple as that in case of uh, bulk air because in case of soil uh, some pore space are filled with uh, uh, you know you know some pores you know the total volume occupied by the continuous air field pores uh, because some pores will be filled by air and some pores will be filled by water and also there will be tortuous tortuous nature of those pores so as you can see here these are coarse particles in any kind of soil so the diff path of diffusion is not very simple not very straight just like here so this is called tortuous nature of diffusion so tortuous pathway of diffusion so as a result of this as a result of this phenomena these ds or diffusion coefficient in the soil has to be a function of the air fuel ferocity air field fer porosity now what is air fuel field porosity you know the total porosity so if you uh, so if you subtract the volume uh, you know the volume of the pore space which is occupied by the air from the total pore space will get the air field porosity which we denote by fa now this is this fa is very much important because different workers have of uh, you know have over the workers have over the years found different relation between these ds and uh, fa between various soils for instance buckingham in 1904 reported the following nonlinear relation that is ds over d0 equal to k fa square and uh, this k is basically constant so penman further modified and found a linear relation that is ds over z0 equal to 0.66 fa so that basically means this 0.66 is basically tortuosity coefficient suggesting that the apparent path is about 2/3 length of the real average path of the diffusion in the soil so this is very important formula please remember this formula because this will be used for solving several problems in the next lecture Uh, of uh, or uh, in the next tutorial so uh, we have covered this uh, fixed law of diffusion and uh, this is the reference the nature and properties of soil by niles e brady and rayard will and uh, so we we have covered the all the major aspects of soil aeration and uh, so we are wrapping up the soil aeration chapter so let us go to another major important parameter that is soil temperature this is a very important soil physical parameter now what is the importance of soil temperature well because you know soil temperature is very important because it affects plant and microorganisms growth it also affects evaporation it affects soil aeration and many important soil phenomena from forest damaged pipelines and pavements to the spring aquinic of biological activities in soil is basically governed by the soil temperature so it is a very very important soil you know physical parameter or i would say it is a very important soil physical property so uh, what are the processes that affected by soil temperature so the temperature of soil greatly affects the physical biological and chemical processes occurring in that soil and in the plants growing on it because uh, different plant processes the plants are able to extract the water and nutrient in a specific range of temperature we'll discuss in the next slide and also microbial you know the millions and billions of microorganisms which are present into the soil they are active in specific range of soil temperature they cannot be active beyond a certain range of temperature so that is also important freezing and thawing freezing and thawing is very important as you can see in this uh, 
picture this is called a permafrost condition we will discuss this later. Now, in this permafrost condition uh, considerable portion of the soil remains frozen and this is basically you can see in the tundra region of uh, or in the hill, you know, in the mountainous region of the. Uh, so, m most of the part of the year you will see that these soils are, you know, are, are frozen, remain frozen. So, these are called the permafrost condition, and, uh, you know, soil heating by fire is also very important. Uh, Processes which affect which are governed by soil temperature. So again, these uh, plant processes, different plant processes, they are you know nutrient and water uptake by plants and their microbial processes. You'll see that different types of microorganisms are present in different conditions. You'll see in the compost pit uh, there will be specific types of microorganisms because then they can they can they can uh, they can withstand a specific range of temperature. So, all these processes are very much important from the soil as well as plant growth point of view and these all are you know governed by the soil temperature or the variation in soil temperature. So, let us go ahead and see what are the different ranges which are associated with the variety of soil processes. So, this is very informative side. So, let us see, uh, let us let us start from the you know from the bottom. So, you can see that uh, this is in degree centigrade obviously, this scale is in the degree centigrade. So, um, below 10 degree centigrade there will be almost 0 biological uh, you know almost 0 biological actions. So, above 10 to so the cryophilic microorganisms uh, will will remain in this temperature range and below and from 10 to 20 or 20 to 30 this range I would say from 15 to 35 you will see mesophilic microorganism will remain in the soil and obviously, remember that this 30 to 35 degree centigrade range is optimum for nitrification which is one of the important nitrogen transformation process which we will discuss later on. And remember that below temperature at the you know below 0 degree centigrade temperature there will be minimum biological activity and as a result of the minimum biological activity there will be minimum nitrification and nitrification is required for the growth of the plant because plant requires nitrate for their growth and this nitrate can be generated through the nitrification process. And obviously, ammonification which is another important process of nitrogen transformation that occurs within the range from 35 to 40 degree centigrade. So, and also you will see from 45 degree to uh, 100 degree you will see the thermophilic microorganism are mostly prevalent because they are uh, they love higher temperature for their growth and you will see that uh, you know maximum bare soil surface in the maximum bare soil surface you will see the temperature range around 50 degree centigrade and around from 55 to 65 degree centigrade in this range you will see the most of the soil microorganisms are getting killed because of high soil temperature. Only those microorganisms which are present in the compost peat, compost is an important soil manure we will discuss that later on. So, in the compost peat you will see some microorganisms are present and these microorganisms are thermophilic microorganisms they can only uh, they can sustain in this higher temperature range. And be above uh, 80 degree you will see most weed seeds kill in uh, you know in minutes and obviously at 100 degree centigrade the water will boil. And also this uh, 60 to around 60 to 100 degree centigrade you will see that temperature at 2 centimeter during the brush or fire uh, you know uh, you know brush or forest fire is in case of brush or forest fire you will see the temperature uh, will vary in this uh, in, in this region obviously. And also, uh, this temperature region that is 55 to around 60, it will be maximum for soil solarization. So, most weed seeds kill in this region around 55 to 60 and uh, you know nematodes get killed and pythium fungus get killed around 45 to 50 degree centigrade temperature and for germination for most of the you know most of the crops optimum growth of the most of the crops you will see it grows in the range from 
10 degree to around 30 degrees centigrade. So, most of the crops optimum growth of cotton and you know corn, peas, potatoes, grass, oats, rye, rest, map, everything can be grown, most of them are grown optimally in this temperature region. And below the 10 degree centigrade, you will see flower bud vernalization. So, what is vernalization? We'll discuss in the next slide. And also, these are minimum for rye peas and uh, rice and peas germination. So, you see that the temperature, soil temperature is very, very critical not only for the growth of the crop, but also for the growth of the microorganisms and their dif and different you know nutrient transformation processes because all those nutrient transformation processes depends on microbial activity. So, if the microbial activity is low at a certain temperature obviously all the mic you know microbial mediated nutrient transfer process transformation process also get uh, you know uh, their rate also uh, getting lower down. So, this is very important slide. So, please remember these tem temperature ranges and uh, we will discuss uh, you know different different implication of the soil temperature ranges in differ in, in, in coming lectures. So, I hope that this uh, slide is informative to you. So, let us go to uh, let us go to the plant processes. What are the important plant processes? So, most of the plants are sensitive to soil temperature and remember that soil temperature affects the seed germination and the root growth. Seed will not germinate below a certain temperature or above a certain temperature. So, uh, many plants require a specific temperature to trigger the seed germination and remember what is vernalization. We talked about vernalization in the last slide. So, the seeds of certain prairie grasses and grain crops require a period of cold soil temperature which varies from 2 to 4 degree centigrade to enable them to germinate uh, in the following spring. So, this process is called vernalization. And remember that root function are sluggish in the winter months and nutrient movement are also so in cool soils and excess temperature can also dam dam uh, damage the roots. So, for most of the field crops a generally a temperature range from 15 to 35 degree centigrade is considered optimum for their growth. Some crops require somewhat higher temperature or somewhat lower temperature. So, so, we have uh, discussed the plant process. Let us go to the next slide and see what are the important microbial processes. So, microbial activity ceases at temperature that freezes water. We have already seen that less than 0 degree centigrade and microbial activity is far greater at warm temperature and the rates of microbial process such as respiration typically more than double for every 10 degrees centigrade rise in temperature. And the optimum temperature for microbial decomposition process may be around 35 to 40 degree centigrade. Remember that whatever you know remains dead in, in the soil and we are throwing any dead bodies into the soil that needs to be decomposed. So, that uh, you know the nutrients and other organic matter uh, can convert it to other beneficial forms. Now, this optimum temperature for microbial decomposition process is 35 to 40 degree centigrade. So, if it is less than a certain temperature, you will see that accumulation of more organic matter. So, that is why you will see in the cooler uh, hilly region, you will see there will be accumulation of more organic matter or in other words lower rate of decomposition of organic matter. So, in environments with hot and sunny sum summers and a heating process called soil solarization can be used to control pests and diseases in some high value crops. We have already seen the soil solarization in the last slide. So, uh, you will see that what is the effect of temperature in net nitrogen mineralization and soil organic carbon losses. So, if you can see this slide, it is clear that <coughs> at any given point of time, the you know the higher the temperature obviously the nitrogen net mineralization rate is higher the similar the same thing is true also for soil organic carbon loss so i mean that that is how soil temperature affects not only the nitrogen dynamics but also the carbon dynamics in the soil as well as their movement from soil to atmosphere so What are the effects? I mean, you can see also in this, uh, in this, in this, 
uh, in this graph that we are putting the soil temperature in degree centigrade from 0 to 30 degree centigrade and we are seeing that uh, you know a different uh, you know carbon uh, you know different trends of carbon respite nitrogen mineralization and sulfur mineralization so you can see that as the temperature increase obviously all three processes are increasing uh, this carbon the amount of carbon respite is continuously increasing from 0 degree to 30 degree centigrade nitrogen mineralization is also increasing from 0 to 35 uh, 30 degree centigrade so uh, likewise the sulfur also get increasing mineralized uh, from 0 degree centigrade to 30 degree centigrade so this shows the effect of soil temperature on cumulative microbial respiration these are basically microbial respiration or carbon dioxide release and net nitrogen and sulfur mineralization in surface soil so basically as the temperature increases the microbial respiration or carbon dioxide release also increases not only carbon dioxide already release but also the associated process like nitrogen mineralization and sulfur mineralization also increases so what is freezing and thawing now if remember that the freezing and thawing increases the structural stability however for soils with good aeration to begin with freeze thaw action when the soil is very wet can lead to structural deterioration and alternate freezing and thawing can force objects upward into the soil a process called frost heaving we will see what is frost heaving in the next slide which is most severe when the soil is silty in nature and freezing also can have shallow foundation uh, I am sorry freezing also can heave the uh, shallow foundation roads and runaways uh, you know runaways that have uh, you know fine material as a base. So, the foundation depth should be maintained that is 10 centimeter for subtropical and 200 centimeter for very cold region. So, let us see what is frost heaving. So, you can see here in this slide uh, at the beginning there is a tap rooted legume here. So, we are also seeing a stone at a certain depth in the soil and also there is a post set at a concrete at a certain depth. So, as the ice begins to develop there will be you know the ice lens uh, is uh, you know continues to form and as a result you will see there is slightly movement upward uh, you know slightly upward movement of this post as well as these uh, you know this stone and as the ice lens continues to grow uh, the boom with the relative position of this post ice and this uh, you know of this plant is uh, you know increased and as a, and after a certain period of time when the ice melts the melting starts from the top obviously but as a result of that as a result of the total melting after the total melting of the ice you will see there will be a relative displacement upward displacement of all the objects starting from this post and this uh, plant as well as this stone. So, this is called frost heaving and this is very very dangerous for any engineering construction. So, that is why it has to be very very you know uh, they, you know you need to take care it you know you need to uh, consider this very carefully uh, while we are building any engineering structure. So, what is permafrost? We talked about permafrost a little bit. So, the thawing of arctic permafrost and the permafrost we discussed permafrost is uh, a condition where the soil remains freeze frozen for a considerable part of the year and remember that the thawing of this arctic permafrost is expected to further accelerate global warming as decomposition of organic matter you know organic materials long trapped in the frozen layers of histels histels mean histosols and jelly salts so it is a combination of histosols and jelly salts so in this condition obviously uh, these thawing of this arctic farmer frost will you know release a vast quantities of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere so generally this permafrost in this permafrost condition um, you know uh, they preserve the organic carbon into the earth they helps in uh, they helps in basically carbon sequestration however due to the thawing of arctic permafrost uh, a huge amount of 
this uh, sequestered carbon in the form of organic uh, matter get decomposed and as a result it produces these different types of uh, greenhouse gases ultimately uh, which leads towards uh, global warming. So, uh, in this lecture we have discussed some basic aspects of soil aeration, what are the important factors of soil aeration and then we discuss about uh, different aspects of soil uh, temperature and uh, so let us wrap up here and we will try to finish the soil temperature in our next lecture. Thank you.